Hey everyone, welcome back to Exploration Place in the Kemper Creative Learning Studio. My name is Victoria and today we're going to learn about brains. As you might have seen from our earlier um, video on it on Facebook. All right, so we're going to start with our brain. Now, if you did not know, the brain is the powerhouse of the body. It is what controls everything we do. And you might envision it, if you close your eyes, you might envision it as a two-lobed, wrinkly gray blob. And in fact, we don't always have those wrinkles. When we're born, those wrinkles aren't, sorry, when we are in development, those wrinkles aren't there. But, and when we are born, we are born with the same amount of wrinkles as we have as an adult. Now, as we grow, in order for our brain to stay inside of our head and still maintain its shape, we get those wrinkles to be deeper. And those wrinkles are called the sulci and the gyri. And if we were to unfold all of those wrinkles, our brain would be the size of a pillowcase. Can you imagine walking around with a pillowcase sized head? Oh my gosh. All right. I need a volunteer. Hey, Daniel, how's it going? Hi. Daniel's going to be our volunteer today. Now, Daniel, I need you to hop on one foot. My foot? Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Now just keep going. Now, the brain is made up of primarily water and about 100 billion nerve cells. And those nerve cells are what's going... <laughs> Sorry, it's just really funny watching you have to stand here and hop. Um, but those brain cells are going to send all of the uh, messages to the body, and the body is then resending those electrical circuits back to the body, and that's how we communicate. And that's how we're able to do literally everything from breathing to hopping on one foot to singing and dancing and playing outside. Now, our brain does this by um, filtering the those tasks to different parts of the brain. Now, what kind of parts of the brain do you think you're using? Uh, motor, cerebellum, and sensory. You only know that because I told you. Okay, that's true. Okay, you can stop for a second. Oh. Oh, okay. Are you tired yet? Yes. Okay, go have a seat for a second. Okay. All right. Now, when we look at our brain, when he was up here and he was using his brain to hop up and down, and he was using three main parts, and he was right. Those parts are the cerebellum, which is the green section at the bottom of the brain, and that is helping us with fine motor skills and balance. And then the blue part is our sensory area. Hey, Daniel, when you were bouncing up and down, did you were able to feel your feet? I could feel my feet. Okay. They were touching the ground, right? When I felt it touch the ground, yeah. Okay, great. And then we had our motor area, which was then um, communicating from the brain to your muscles, which was allowing your muscles to contract and release, allowing you to jump up and down. Okay, are you ready for the next part? No. <laughs> are you sure? Okay, now I'm ready. Okay, all right. So you're all going right. to <sighs> hop on one foot, pat your head and rub your tummy. Ready? Go. Okay, do it for like three more seconds, and you can go have a seat. Woo. All right. Now, when he was doing that, we were adding in an area of the brainstem called the reticular formation. And the reticular formation is the part of the brain that helps us filter out that sensory information. So instead of him hopping on one foot, rubbing his belly, patting his head, and then thinking about his homework, his homework is going out of the way because his brain is focusing on the task at hand. So Mr. Daniel, were you thinking about how hungry you were? No. Not at all. Not even that's a little good. bit. That's good. Were you thinking about how sore your legs were? Only a little bit. Only a little bit. <laughs> and that's because bit. your muscles were working while you were doing it. And those muscles were then sending that information back to you. Okay, so we have one more exercise to do. And in order to do this one, we're going to need everyone involved. So you're going to help us out, and I'm going to have everybody stand up. So if you're in a space where you have a little bit of room to move, let's go ahead and stand up. You're going to hop on one foot. You're going to pat your belly, rub your head, or pat your head, rub your belly, whichever one works out for you, and recite this poem all at the same time. Oh, gracious. All Ready? right. My brain, my brain, I'll say it again, controls all the things I can do. 
Without my big brain, I wouldn't be me, and really, you couldn't be you. When I'm feeling some pain, I'm using my brain just like I do when I think. My brain is controller of all other things like seeing greens, yellows, and pink. In voluntary functions, my body performs like breathing and beating my heart. Great job. All right, let's give Daniel a round of applause for all of his help today. Yay. All right. So when we add in reading, we get a lot more complicated. And we have to go look at these our brain image again. And instead of just having those four areas we're working on, we've added three more areas. So at the very back of our brain in that orange spot is our primary visual cortex, which is making out the shapes of the and the order of the different letters that he was reading. Then we move on to the Wernix area, which is the blue area, which helps us determine what those words are and interpret the data as our brain is communicating it. And then the Broca's area, which is then helping us form the words so we are able to speak as it signals the motor, the motor area to move our lips and our tongue. Now, through all of that, the um, frontal lobe is probably trying to figure out exa just exactly why we were even doing that in the first place. So now that we know what our brain does, let's get into a little bit of the anatomy. So we're going to go ahead and dissect our brain. You guys ready? All right. To do that, we're going to first start off with some gloves. We want to make sure we're nice and safe and practicing safe science. So I'm going to put on my gloves and I'm also going to put on my safety glasses. Because just like our shark, our brain is um, preserved in, in chemicals, and we want to make sure that those chemicals are staying out of our eyes and off of our skin. All right. So now that we have that set, let's move on down to our brain, and let's get it out of its package. So this is a sheep's brain, and a sheep's brain is roughly the similar shape to a human brain, but it is much smaller. So a human brain is going to be about two fists, whereas our sheep's brain is only about one fist. All right, so if you want to put your two fists together, that's about how big your brain is right now. So the other major difference between a human brain and a sheep's brain is from what we saw the diagram earlier, the cerebellum on a human brain is underneath the uh, different cerebrum areas whereas on a sheep that is actually behind it and on the anterior and that's because sheep walk on four legs and we only walk on two all right so let's look at a little bit of our anatomy on the outside before we give it a good cut so this is our cerebellum right here and then these are is our cerebrum so our cerebrum is going to be two lobes so we have our left and our right lobe and then you'll see those ridges, those wrinkles are the sulci and the gyri. So those, all that material just goes deeper into the brain so that we can have as much surface area for those nerve cells as possible. If we flip our brain over, then we see our brain stem, which is where that reticular formation is that helps with sensory processing. And then we have these two little flaps that come off the top. And those two flaps are going to be our orbital nerves, so our optical nerves. So those are the two flaps that attach to our eyes and are allowing our eyeballs to send all that information for use at our primary visual cortex, which is at the back of the cerebrum, and then getting that processed all the way through so that we're able to speak. All right. So we're going to go ahead and make our first cut. Now, brains are very, very soft. Um, they don't take a whole lot of tissue. But what we are going to do is we're going to cut um, laterally down the middle of our brain so we can cut those lobes directly in half. Okay. So I got my two lobes, and now I'm going to cut right through the middle of the cerebellum and through the middle of the brain stem. Okay, so there's half a brain. And we'll see lo lots of cool things in half of our brain, especially if we zoom in. You get a good real close look right here at our tree of life on the arbor vitae. So if we look at our brain, see it a little bit better up close here. 
you'll see that white tissue in the middle looks a lot like a tree. So the arbor vitae is considered the, um, or translated to roughly the tree of life, which is, bring, so this is bringing in all that motor information into the cerebellum so that it can help with the fine motor skills. All right, can everybody see that? Oh, come back this way. There we go, that's a good picture of it right there. So you can see that tree right here. All right, and the other big thing we can talk about is our corpus callosum. And our corpus callosum is this piece of tissue right here that is a, a really thick uh, mass area of the nerve endings and nerve cells. And that corpus callosum is what connects the two sides of our brain together. So it's going to hook right in the middle. And if I bring the other piece up, you can see it on the other side. And it kind of looks a lot like um, the outline of an earlobe. And it's a lot thicker and feels a little bit like cartilage when the rest of the brain is very squishy and sponge-like. So it's a lot thicker of a tissue right there. Now, the, since that corpus callosum is what's connecting it, um, it's said that um, Einstein actually had a larger corpus callosum, which is one thing that was very different from his brain than a regular human brains. And there's actually a few other differences. So if you ever want to look into that, it's pretty cool stuff. All right. So the one thing we have left, left to talk about is the gray matter and the white matter. So those two things are very separate. And if we slice into our brain right here and just cut this piece right in half, we can see that gray and white matter a lot better on each lobe. And we still have some blood vessels in there. That's what you're seeing attached at the bottom. All right, so there is our white and our gray matter. So we have our white in the middle and our gray on the outside. So the gray matter is responsible for transmitting signals to the rest of the body where our white matter is going to send those signals to a specific location. So the white matter is in charge of getting it to the right part of the body, and the gray matter is in charge of sending it initially. So those are those two main parts. All right, so we have our sulci and our gyri, which are the ridges on the outside of the brain, all those wrinkles. We have our cerebellum, which is for fine motor function. We have our gray and white matter, our cerebrum, which is our two lobes of our brain. And we have our optic nerves on the bottom and our brainstem as well. So those are all the main parts of a brain. And similar to a human brain, like I said, the cerebellum would be underneath. But our brain does so many cool things. In fact, it does everything for your body. So make sure you thank your brain because it uses almost a quarter of your oxygen by having lots of good breathing, taking in lots of water, and eating a good balanced diet. So we want to thank you guys today for coming, and we hope you enjoyed our brain dissection. And just so you don't forget, we have virtual camps coming soon. And so look for those on all of our social media and on our website at exploration.org. Thank you guys so much for coming, and we hope you enjoyed the live dissection.